a viewer has asked if uh, the Russian president uh, and the uh, generals or you know will face uh, war crime uh, you know charges so that's what this video will be about I hope you like the video if you do like it please do like it if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe it just makes an awful big difference and you don't know how much it means to me I'm trying to get to a goal and uh, so that I can keep doing this so I hope that you will subscribe and thank you very very much for watching I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. If these aren't war crimes, I don't know what is. So, um, you know, we'll just get right to it. We'll get into the cards and see what they have to say about Putin, the generals, the people who are in charge of all this ridiculous, senseless uh, suffering that they've imposed. I mean, it's like going back to medieval times. Okay, so uh, Linda Joe, thank you for your question. And Linda, no, this is not Linda Joe. Yeah, it is. Linda Joe asked, will Vladimir Putin or the Russian government or Russian generals face war crime uh, charges um, against uh, Ukraine? Okay, not. But we're seeing a lot of uh, injustice. So, will Vladimir Putin or the Russian government or the Russian generals, anybody, okay, has been doing this, face uh, actual war crime charges? So, will some of that uh, Russian regime under Putin face war crime charges like uh, Hitler's uh, regime did, I presume? Take a minute to meditate. Horrific stuff going on. So, will anyone in Putin's regime face actual war crimes uh, charges? War crimes. War crimes charges. Anyone in that regime? War crimes. Judgment. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. The judgment card uh, falls over the deck. Seems to be a yes. Okay, let's put the cards away. <laughs> so, we'll get six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Seems like a good time to talk about that, you know, each reader has their own relationship with the cards and how they uh, talk to them and how the cards um, get, get information back and forth. So don't feel like you can pit one reader against another because each one has their value if they're sincere. The signifier card in this, uh, will it be judgment against any of that regime, is the king, the king of wands, uh, the king of wands. So uh, wands are a plan, an action, a forward movement. The king is absolutely going, his plan is going to be moved forward signifier. The um, challenge to that with this, uh, what do we have, nine of coins. So the nine of coins is um, the very wealthy um, uh, uh, lady that we usually see depicted for this card. But this is a lot of value. There's a lot of worth. That's the challenge to this um, this big uh, plan. So yeah, this almost represents all those oligarchs uh, all those, you know, the generals are also rolling in the dough. And um, so that's the challenge to that plan. The base of this reading is this, oh, this is the card that's specific uh, to this deck that you won't find something similar in the Rider Waite deck, really. It's called Protection. And uh, this is um, a, uh, a fruitful card. Okay, this card shows us, uh, if you look into it, there's a stream here just loaded with fish. There's a, uh, a bush here with lots of birds uh, on the wing getting ready to take off. Although the tree itself is a bit barren. The landscape is lush. And uh, so this uh, is an interesting 
uh, dichotomy of, uh, of um, a lot of value, a lot of lush uh, uh, against some barrenness there. So the basis of this whole thing is that some have taken advantage of the bounty and left uh, the uh, tree bare. The past of this reading uh, with this uh, page of coins. So the past of this reading, uh, the page is the very least effective of the royal court least strong. He's a messenger, but he's bringing a big message of coin here, a big message of value here. So the past of this has been that the, the message, the value message, hasn't been very uh, persuading or valuable. Uh, values as in uh, not money. In the sky of this is the king of coin, and that is uh, what has been ruling all of this, is who can uh, you know, become that king of coin. And then the um, likely outcome of this with the six of coins is, um, oh, I've forgotten what the six of coins is. And once I admit that I've forgotten, it won't come to me unless I read it. Uh, six of coins is uh, ah, greed, envy, imbalance. Yeah. So, you know, I think we need three more cards or four more cards. So it's a battle. It's a battle between uh, good and evil, I mean, clearly. Four cards. The self of this question, of will there be punishment, is uh, like a Puchin. So this is the um, the hermit. Okay, so this is looking for that way forward. It's not confident. It's slow. It's steady. It's measured. It might take a while. Okay, uh, it's moving in almost as blind. Okay, the environment that that's in is uh, the the sky. Um, for me, this is a, another card again that's particular to this uh, deck that you won't find it in equivalent to in the right way. But uh, so this is air. So this is almost like a Wheel of Fortune kind of card, although it's not the Wheel of Fortune. But um, so this is all the elements um, uh, of good that are involved in trying to uh, find that way. It's it's a whole universe uh, that you have to maneuver through to find to thread that needle to punish those people. The hopes and the fears, well, yeah, is uh, called uh, luminary. So the sun, yeah, the hopes and the hopes is that all the light gets shined down on this thing to uh, expose uh, what is there, and then the likely outcome of the whole thing. Well, with this three of swords, this is typically depicted by a heart with three swords thrust through it. So yeah, it seems like there will be some some payment made. Um, can't say when. Well, like I say often, only time will tell whether the cards have been accurate. Let me know what you think and let me know what questions you'd like me to address. I'm more than happy to do it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these are the Book of Toth, Le Livre de Toth by um, de Tallier, whose name is actually, uh, was actually I, Aliette, I think. So this was France. This is back in the mid uh, 1700s. And uh, Book of Toth is uh, the problem. The thing with these cards is that they don't uh, decipher like the typical Rider of weight cards do, Rider of weight cards. But uh, these are beautiful, but I mean, they're cryptic. So you've got to be comfortable in the divinations you're going to use for these. Um, so I don't use them very much, to tell you the truth. But I thought they'd be good for this. And of course, this is just a good time to spread them out so you can see the cards, you know, what they look like. Uh, and uh, get a feel for what this deck's going to be like in just a minute. And uh, maybe you're going to uh, shoot some of your energy uh, across the uh, airwaves into this reading. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, so these are great cards. I like them. But they are hard to use if you don't use them every day, I think. Hey, I'm Mark. It's been my journey through tarot. I'm going to do it all again tomorrow if you want to come. So ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.